everyone. Welcome to Brain Power, short interviews from UT Austin's Human Dimensions of Organizations. HDO, as we call it, teaches students and professionals to use the humanities and the social and behavioral sciences to analyze workplace challenges. I am Amy Ware, the program's director. And today, our guest is, is Dr. Elizabeth Richmond Garza, who helps shape the HDO curriculum. She's been a part of the program since its launch in 2013. She she's a distinguished teaching associate professor of English here at UT Austin and the director of UT's program in comparative literature. Dr. Richmond Garza teaches an HDO master's course on society, culture, and diversity, as well as a one-day open enrollment course called Understanding and Managing Motivations. Thank you so much for joining us, Elizabeth. It's always a pleasure. So to start, will you explain how your academic research connects to HDO's mission of teaching the ways the liberal arts can deepen our understanding of people in organizational contexts? Well, it's lovely to be here chatting with you, Amy, with my funny British accent. I'm so excited <laughs> to talk about both my research and teaching interests and their connection to HDO. I would say there are two parts of my research and my teaching across the curriculum here at UT Austin that are specifically at the center of my commitment to HDO. One is diversity, by which I mean the complex intersectionality of each of our lives. We have gender, we have sexuality, we have nationality, we have ethnicity, we have class, we have learning styles. And my work, uh, both uh, in my scholarship and in my teaching, is centered on that kind of diversity as well as, hence the funny accent, the way in which not all of us are coming from the same place when we meet together on the 40 acres or in any organizational context. The second thing I want to mention is, maybe that's why I'm dressed all in black with a dramatic background, my main research is on theater, on what we all understand to be the roles that we get asked to play. Perhaps on the one hand, we think that there's a different kind of role, which is when you're asked to be Hamlet, or you're asked to be any character in any number of wonderful fictional human expressive spaces in cinema and on the live stage, which I hope is about to come back. But my sense is, and that's what I work with our students uh, in terms of thinking about, is that following a lot of mid 20th century sociology, actually we're playing roles in everyday life. So reflecting on our diversity and also not trying to discourage people, but on the fundamental problem that we are never able fully to be ourselves. Maybe not even when we interact with our friends and perhaps always particularly when we're in a public or workplace setting. That's what I actually do most of my research on, and that's what I love working with the HDO community about. It's so important to think, you know, think about how theater teaches us so much also about what we don't know, it, playing roles and also how to understand different people um, and why they're doing what they're doing. Something not often thought about in uh, professional, um, professional teaching. Mm -hmm. In drama, we're always aware that you are presenting a role. Nobody blames you if you deliver the line to be or not to be, because everyone knows that's the words you're supposed to say. But the particular human being who's standing up there on the stage has a history, has what they had for breakfast, has what they're suffering, has what their ambitions are. And just like the character of Hamlet, the roles that we play in workspaces are ones that optimize, ideally that express ideally who we are, what we're good at, what we care about, but there's a world of our identities that's actually never fully present. And so I'm always inviting folks to be humble, respectful, and attentive, to think about what is present, what is being performed at the workplace, but also frankly, what is not there that we will never perhaps know. Yeah. And that brings us to some of your teaching um, with our particular cohort of students. And what have you learned from teaching these uh, mid-career professionals? What's remarkable about teaching, in my view, whether you're working with a middle school child and you're doing outreach in West Texas, whether you're working with a fresh undergraduate who's just arrived at UT one minute ago, because I teach in that world as well, but I think what's especially clear about working with the HDO master's class students is 
it's about them. My approach to teaching is student-centered. I view the work I would do with someone who's 12, someone who's 18, someone who's in their mid-30s or mid-40s, someone who's retired and wants to think about what the last stage, or let's hope just the next stage, of their life and career might look like, that that teaching experience is about them. It's a conversation. What's amazing about the experience of working with the students in HDO is that's hardwired. It's not a matter of a pedagogical style that I've picked, although I do pick that one. It's about the agility, the freshness, the authenticity, the expertise, the directness of engagement and the passion that that community of each cohort brings, which of course, for me as the person facilitating that conversation is incredibly exciting. And I think it is core to what makes the experience of HDO so impactful, of course for me as the instructor, but actually for every member of that conversation. Every fall when we welcome a new cohort, every December after a long, wonderful capstone development project when we say congratulations on what you've accomplished. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, our students time and again cite your class as one of the most uh, mind opening of, of their time in the program. What, uh, what learning outcomes do you hope your students will leave your HDO courses with? Um, for example, you discuss that people uh, often make assumptions about you on account of your English accent, as you mentioned at the start. And I will, I'll let you go from there. <laughs> so I, thank you very much for asking about this. So I think there are a number of learning outcomes that are important from each of our classes. All of my wonderful colleagues and I care about content, case studies, actual material, concrete things that we ask you to reflect upon. I think all of us care about methodology strategies, techniques, perspectives that may be helpful to you for reflecting on yourself as a human being and especially on yourself in a professional, collective, organizational setting. At the core, however, I think there really are three things that I'm hoping, whether we're thinking about apartheid South Africa, whether we're working on Peel's Get Out, whether we're thinking about transgender identity construction in 2020 in the media and how it does and doesn't correlate to the actual lived experiences of humans that we know are in our community and maybe we know ourselves. What it comes down to is three things. I hope to ask them to think about intersectionality. Audre Lorde said no one has a single issue. No one lives a single issue life. So that's to be aware that whatever is presented to you, there's a world of complex, fabulous things about that person that lie behind it. The second thing I hope that I'm inviting all of the people in the cohort to reflect on in my class and also in the one day seminars that I'm interested and love to give is I think it's really important for them to think about empathy. So empathy and sympathy kind of seem like the same word. Sympathy, however, presumes that you can really walk in someone else's shoes. Empathy says, I see you, I hear you, I need to recognize you, but I will never know what it's like to be you. So it's a connection, but it's one with respect. And the third thing I hope that people that I'm able to work with in HDON and in other classes I teach have a chance to reflect on is vulnerability. We're not perfect. That's a cliche. But it's a really, really important thing to pause on. Uh, Candy's recent book asks us to think about vulnerability. I sometimes use the word humility. Our success in creating productive, collaborative, top performing teams depends actually upon our recognition of what we do not do what we have not done, what we cannot see. And that humility, that vulnerability, opens a space for us to be able to work with people in a very different and very impactful kind of way. Thank you for sharing your experiences and <clears throat> your teaching approaches with us today. Um, I am so thankful you're a part of the HDO community. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Amy. Oh. It was beautiful to talk to you.